Hey, welcome to the Blackout Test Podcast. I'm your host, Rod, joined as always by my co-host with the co-host. Thank you, Aaron. I'm in the house. And we are live on a Saturday, ready to do feedback. That's where you have comments and stuff, and we read them, and we tell you what we think about what you said, and it's a real nice, friendly environment, and we appreciate everybody who takes time out to do that. We do. Feedback, you can leave it all through looking in the show notes. The show notes has all the like contact info stuff for you to leave, like our website, all that stuff. So just check it out there. That's a shortcut. The official weapon of the show is the taser and the unofficial sport ball. and bullet ball extreme. There are also people that go to our website, theblackouttips.com, and give us money just looking on the right hand side. And they'll be like, boom, I'm going to donate some money to the show. We give them a shout out. May I have your attention? You are now listening to Charlotte Silver, Rod, and Karen. We welcome the good folks of time to the Black Lives Matter. Oh, yes. New donations, new salutations. Tiffany B., thank you for hooking us up. Charlotte Wong, Esquire, please say the Esquire. Lindsay B., J. Full, Alfonso L., Palmetto Stone Magic, Mr. Span from the Mr. Span Podcast, Jasmine J., Autumn W, David C, James C, Dr. Professor Bambi, Letitia C, Unbridled Love, uh, Girl Falcons Diva, Kevin W, Jason F, Derek L W, and Ken M. Those are the people that came through with the money this week. We appreciate y'all. Thank you. Uh, we also got five star review. We got one this week. Yay, let's go, y'all. It's from MCC in Houston. Uh, it says five stars for every single show, especially hashtag nerd shield reference. Uh, I love me a fellow dorky girl and an unrestrained laugh. Never change, Karen. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, you know, Karen did make that Age of the Shield reference, and I didn't know how many people got it or not. Me I'm, either. I know it's deep in the nerve. <laughs> Uh, the nerd bag, you know. Yeah, I, I don't came a long way for those of you that uh, are fans of the nerd off for of going. I'm not no nerd. Yeah, we just recently recorded a new episode of Nerd Off, the first one we've done in about four months because of travel back and forth in New York and all that stuff. Um, but it's out. Uh, and I put it as one of the just the tips for y'all that listen on Spotify and your uh, just a tipper. You can uh check it out there. And uh, it was fun, man. We had Aaron from the Black Astronauts podcast. We had Chris Lambert, friend, friend of the show. Um, and uh, we just talked nerdy stuff, and it was good, good old nerdy time. So enjoy that. Uh, let's talk about these episodes, though, okay? Each episode, we be having comments from y'all. We do. We put a post on our website, theblackouttips.com. You can go there and leave comments. Uh, the episode... That was our feedback show from last week was 2708 Cute Klux Klan uh, was the name of it. Um, and we got four comments. Uh, of course, the first one is from Apia. Thanks for believing in my ability to cheat. Girl, you know, ain't nothing. I could maybe <laughs> somehow do it, but I don't know. It wouldn't be worth it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you should do it. I just believe that you could do it. We have That's faith all. in you. Okay. Never let yourself down. <laughs> Maybe, you know, that's what they say. The difference between can and can't is your attitude. Ah! Uh, maybe I just don't hear criticism anymore. Maybe I achieve the level of bitchiness and hostility that makes people don't dare say something. If so, great. But honestly, somehow when I got the 40, things got better. I never expected it to happen. People seem to be into what I have to offer in a good way. They talk to me in a normal way and never say anything to me about any part of my appearance. I suspect it's because I live in peace with myself and don't need validation. Right. Yeah, some of that stuff... Honestly, man, I feel like a lot of stuff about people's bodies is from inside. And I know it's external because of the society we live in. But, like, a lot of that is their voice about their own bodies talking about other people. So it's like, yes. the, like their internal monologue is I can't be too big or I can't be too whatever. I'm too much and I'm not comfortable and I'm not happy with myself. And I'm never, you know, and I'm not saying you should completely ignore that kind of stuff if there really is something about your body you would like to change that it's your fucking body 
that's the thing about the body positivity movement. I think that that gets lost sometimes. Is it's your fucking body. So if you are a person that really do feel like you wouldn't be happy until you're weighing a certain pound, maybe investigate that shit or whatever. But also, if that's something that you want to do, nobody should be able to tell you not to. Right. As long as it's not like jeopardizing your health in some type of way that between you and your doctor, like I don't see what would be the fucking problem. To me, a lot of the body positivity movement is just more like mind your fucking business. At least that's where I've come with it. Just mind your fucking business. I don't know what's going on with people's bodies. And I'm not their doctor and all that stuff, but I think a lot of that movement has also changed in your lifetime. And so now maybe, I don't know what it's like in Germany, but maybe people are just minding their fucking business. Like maybe they know the other side of it and they may have those thoughts internally or they, that may have been a thing that 20 years ago, they would have still said something to a 40 year old woman about her body. Yeah. And now because we've had all this media that's been like, hey, shut the fuck up. Don't nobody care. You know, we have mirrors in our house. We know what we look like. Right. Leave us alone. Um, maybe that's been part of it too, is people look at you and be like, hey, my business. Yeah. I, I, and also I think as people, and I've seen people kind of say this, uh, joking fully, but I know they're serious. Even when it comes to like kids and children and things like that, I've seen a lot of people say like, hey, dog, like I just stopped bothering people because I got tired of being cussed out. I was like, yeah, because a lot of times what people fail to realize, most people aren't mean and most people aren't nasty. You're just asking the question from sometimes for some people out of a very valid place. But for that person, you're the hundredth person that has asked. So, you know, they've reached a max and you yeah, I think happen to be the person they lash out at. And I said, fair, right? No, but that's the truth on the reality. I think it's just mind your fucking business. Correct. I really think it's that simple. I, and I th- hopefully that's the message a lot of people got. I, don't, I think it's too much to really hope that people's hearts and minds have changed about all that shit. I really right. think people just learn to keep the shit to themselves. And that's close enough. I don't need to hear close it. Close enough. You don't want to hear it. And it really doesn't lead to any positive place. It makes people feel shitty. Is you know, is, is if that's something they want to focus on, they'll do it. Uh, I just think I'm a human who deserves to live and not be bothered. When I was younger, I got so so many unwanted opinions. I hear very few comments about body or hair, anything. In fact, in any way, and I love it. I also don't need compliments. Just talk normal to me. Yeah, that's another thing too. Sometimes it's even in the compliment it can bother people, but. Um, most, from my experience, most people don't seem to mind a compliment. Uh-uh. I'm not, I mean, I think there's a whole bunch of context and nuance around that. You know, there's mm-hmm. flirty people, there's people that clearly are propositioning it's you, tone. there's people that are saying lewd shit. So, you know, I still uh-huh. would err on the side of saying nothing. Right. Um, I need to be in a really comfortable place with people to really talk about that stuff or joke with people like that. Um, but I just try to be, if I'm going to say anything, which I normally don't, it's try to be complimentary. Um, but you know, we're all human. We're all thinking shit. Everyone can relate to it. No one's a hundred percent on this. Like no. you're going to see somebody walking down the street and think something, say something outside out loud and, and it's not needed, but you're human and you think like that, you know? Yes. Uh, I think people are so mean to Lizzo because they're mad at how she dares to not be thin and still wear flashy clothes and not to hate herself. Yep. Agreed. Ramsey says that she wears what she wants and does not hate herself. Speaks loudly. I love Lizzo. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, even our love of like a Lizzo or something, is actually about us projecting what we want. Like we would like to feel like that. People like her music because of how it makes us feel. Like Mm -hmm. I'm enough. I'm good enough. Uh, Nothing's wrong with me. Um, I, you know, like whatever my flaws are on the inside, outside, the ones I'm aware of, the ones you're aware of, the ones you're not aware of, all that stuff, I'm still trying my best and doing good. And that's really where a lot of her music comes from. Um, And I I love her music because of that, because I mean, I I guess some motherfuckers don't need that. I need that sometimes. I hit that shit. I hit play on that shit and be like, okay, let's go. Yatunde says, I was thinking of an episode of This American Life about Jerry Springer aired years ago. Springer was so much more than trash TV that is now his legacy. He actually started off in progressive politics, doing progressive things. Thankfully, TAL re-aired the story this past weekend. It's worth a listen. Yeah, he also lost that political job fucking with them prostitutes. I mean, listen, I feel you. He's more than that to a lot of people, to, to some people, but his legacy is is this, trash TV. Mm-hmm. And as you said, you know, this is just what it is. It's, it's funny, but yeah, you're right. He's a three-dimensional person that did more than just uh air paternity test and who fucking who and the clan getting beat up but those aren't the things that made my life 
fun and better. And I doubt for most people that the stuff he did before that is the stuff that made their lives fun and better. It's probably probably a TV show. Uh, EVE says, Jerry Springer along with chicken noodle soup and ginger ale were the perfect sick day combination. <laughs> yes, they were. Although he considered the treat king of trash TV, does anyone remember Morton Downey Jr.? He made Jerry look tame because he would get in guest face and blow cigarette smoke in their faces and then yell at them. And his audience members would sometimes come out the audience and fight the guests. That was chef's kiss of trash TV. I don't remember Morton Downey Jr. that much. I don't remember what years his show aired or 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 what i know what he looked like and i do like i've seen some episodes but i just don't remember like his um his show being that big you know right not as big as jerry because for a lot of people jerry was like stop what you're doing because this is for dvd and dvrs and all that shit so if you ain't watch it live you just didn't catch it yeah so i you know i'm 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 sure it was big i just probably missed it somehow I don't, I don't know how um i missed it like what years his show was like was huge you know what i mean so i don't i don't maybe i i, I do remember jerry i definitely remember um like obviously oprah sally jesse raphael ricky lake um mm-hmm. like i remember that era of tv but yeah. uh morton downey jr show i see a clip is from 1988 i must have just missed it or something i don't know yeah we might have been like just outside of that range yeah mm-hmm. um but uh let's see any comments on no comments on youtube for this episode the poll was do you like trash tv and 75 percent say yes 25 percent say no yep that's why i don't do the fake bullshit of, of telling people like we need to do better see we'll watch two women we'll watch black women get on tv and fight okay but we won't watch them you know whatever i'm like i yeah i'm the part of the problem i will watch black women get on tv and fight uh over some reality tv show bullshit before i watch whatever the positive uplifting shit is or sometimes i watch both and to be honest i both both Things exist within me. I, I for, like the ratchet and I like the good stuff. people both exist, right. So, you know, who's the problem? Me. Uh, talk amongst yourselves was the uh, comment for the Q&A. Carrie says, random, I missed the old baller alert segment from the segment intro to the hating ass Terrell Jones comments. It was a blast. If you know, you know. And if you don't, go premium and dig in the archives. Love y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did you cut them out as their own? I started a project where I was cutting up baller alert segments from all the old shows one is a lot of them and it takes a long time but most importantly um it's a little redundant because i don't know how, where or how i would get those to everybody i have to upload every single one and it's so many or blend them all together but then there's like the intro song and then the outro it was a lot of work so um i just abandoned the project but i do i mean i can always go back to try it again but I do have the clips around here of those segments, and yeah, they were fun. I I, I missed yeah, those segments. Definitely premium. I really, you know, Ball Alert changed their whole format of their website, so yeah, we don't have those stories same. anymore. They took them all down. And the commenters like, hey, Nas Terrell Jones, don't be in the comments no more. Mm-mm. The, the groupie stop posting. You're right. Wallace says, aka Blue Wave Rider, some of us have serious XM, so please let us know when you're going to be a guest on the Karen Hunter show. Oh, okay. Um... Okay, I think th- so. This Tuesday, the 16th, I'm supposed to be on there, and then the 26th, I think I'm supposed to be on there. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, the, the 16th and the 26th, you have Sirius XM, uh, tune in to uh, I forget what it's called, Urban Something, and uh, yeah, I should be on the Karen Hunter show if everything goes according mm-hmm. to plan. Raphael says, we talked and came to the conclusion bus trips to Africa shall be made available with only creme de la creme drivers driving while you watch the hottest trash TV. No censorship. Grab tickets now. Uh, according to June, it's Urban View Channel 126. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, James says, at least Jerry Springer handled the KKK way better than Geraldo Broken Nose Rivera. Hashtag rest in peace, Jerry. And that's true. Geraldo took a weird right wing turn, or maybe it wasn't weird, but yeah, I didn't fuck with it, so mm-hmm. uh, he lost a lot of love in my household. That same, uh, grade the road 2709. 
was the episode. Um, three comments. Ramsey D. Jenkins says, five stars for the racism. Snakes in the house. Alligators that look like dogs. Creakers. The old seasonless white gentleman. And Karen's what? Love you both. Thank you. Appia from Germany says, I'm not worried by the fact that teenagers have sex later. I believe in them. They'll get there. I try always to remember all the wild stuff my friends and I did when we are very young to have more understanding for the youth today. Yeah, I think... I agree. I mean, worried is a strong word. I wouldn't say I'm worried about it, but I think these trends are important to keep our eyes on because I think they indicate things, changes in society. Right. And then also the demagoguing of these teenagers is so bad. Yeah, every, um, teenagers get a bad rap. Uh, and I think a lot of people, once they quote unquote grow out of that age, they go, teenagers, can you believe them? It's like, well, well everybody's been a teenager. The fuck? Ain't they the worst? Ain't they trash? They good for nothing. And it's a lot of times you end up just turning into your parents. I also just think the societal implications of the factors that affect them are worth looking into. Agreed. We can't say our country has an epidemic of loneliness and then think that it's un- the correlation between teens having sex and loneliness being at an all-time high are unrelated. You see what I'm saying? Right. So I'm looking at this trend to be like, how do you change it? What What's going to better this? What, what how will they grow out of it? We say they're going to grow out of it. How? You know, I think a lot of people have PTSD coming out of the pandemic. Uh, yep. I think uh, people don't gather as much. I think in America, mm-hmm. you have so many fucking shootings at public places. These kids are probably living in constant anxiety and stuff. What is school even like for kids that got to do fucking active shooter drills and stuff like that? Right. So I think about this in a societal way of like, what is changing for us? Because... um is sex is a shorthand, but sex out normally means that people are interacting in person. And I think, I wonder if we're losing that. Now, like I said, word is probably too strong a word, but it's definitely worth keeping our eyes on. And uh, I do think people will end up having sex at some point, but, um, you know, I, I think, uh, I think when they're having sex and how and all that stuff is, is, is important too. Mm-hmm. Evie says, whether C murder is innocent or not, that man ain't gonna see never see freedom as long as Ben Crump is his attorney. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's see. Comments on YouTube. Oh, we got a bunch. And Harmon just left a happy a heart emoji. Oh, we Hugh, have hearts. Hugh said, Arby's the place there is, the place their place there was. And the best place there ever will be save a fortune on your wedding day. And when I asked why, and is asked why an extra value Arby's wedding, courage. Uh, my mom said, great show. My mom should be here tomorrow for a Mother's Day episode. Mm-hmm. I still haven't gotten her a gift. I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, she said, don't get her nothing, which uh, I mean, sure, that makes sense, I'm sure, but you know, I'll probably. Try to figure something out. Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah, we we can. Well, I will. Yeah, we talk. We get something. Yeah, uh, Karina says hi, Ryan and Karen. Me and my daughter went to get boosted this week. The pharmacist thanked us for coming at least five times. Yeah, folks aren't getting boosted. Nope. Mm-mm. And it's smart people too. And it don't cost them nothing. Well, it may cost them now, but it wasn't yeah. going to cost them nothing. But I did up until I want to say uh, five eleven. Yeah, yeah, it was the last day. Uh, that- now, some people, you still can't get it free, so don't let that stop you. Mm-hmm. You should at least call up there and check because a lot of places are giving it to you free. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, like, people haven't been taking advantage of it before it even got dicey. All right. Kristen says, here from the Karen Hunter Show, truly enjoyed you and your contribution. New fan slash follower. Thank you. Oh, thank you, baby. Yeah, the Karen Hunter. Um, Appreciate that. The Karen Hunter fans have been like really active. Like they hopped in, they was in my mentions in a positive way. I mean, mm-hmm. reaching out, you know, like it was really cool of them. Um, they definitely made me feel welcomed and appreciated and positive feedback and all that stuff. So uh yeah, the Karen Hunter show, man, they got some dope ass fans. And they funny too. They was like tagging my jokes and joking back and forth with me about stuff that we said on the show. So I appreciate them. Um the poll, have you ever mistaken an alligator for a dog? Yes or no? Mm-mm. 9% of our audience has? 91% has not. I assume yeah, that I 9%... Put y'all glasses on? assume that 9% is nearsighted and lives in Florida. All right. Put your glasses and your contacts in, people. Yeah. Oh, wait. You know what I just did? I clicked on the wrong episode. Those are the comments from Folk Asian with J.L. Covent. No wonder there's so many comments. 
Uh, oh, wait, no. I did it right. Okay, never mind. Forget what I said, everybody. I was right. Um, uh, now I need to pull something back up. All right, boom. Uh, so then um, the poll on the website, so I, what I was doing was looking at the wrong poll. That's Yeah, because uh, or I put the wrong poll on our website or something like that. I think that's why I messed up. Yeah. Yep, I messed up. So Gray DeRoe has a different poll than the one on our website um, on Spotify. Son of a bitch. That's all good. Is that what I did? Oh, wait, no, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Never mind, guys, I'm smart. I did it right. Um, <laughs> on our on Spotify, only 4% of y'all have ever mistaken an alligator for a dog. 96% have not. Um, which makes sense, because those people make money, and so they'll be less likely to even be outside touching animals and, and they can afford the good glasses and they don't live in florida Raphael says now hear me out florida son will make a nigga see a puppy not alligator or maybe that's just meth all i'm saying is that florida man got a valid uh, excuse uh, uh, we need uh, to exercise uh, that state and i know a, a guy uh clear lane says about role reversal like with ariel and hermione those roles are not filled with black people trying to be white so this thought process that didn't make sense anyway is weird yeah, about role reversal, like Errol and mine. Those roles are not filled with black people trying to be white. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't. I think a lot of that stuff is weird. I think a lot of that stuff is weird because, like, you're right. When a black person plays a role that would typically be like a white character, we're not putting on white face and shit. So it right. doesn't even fucking make sense. But the, you know, I'm not gonna get to play Othello. Well, you're talking about blackface. So Richard Dreyfus, actually, you could play Othello without the blackface. Now, would you get some pushback? Of course, you get some pushback, but like, at the, at the, it it wouldn't necessarily have to be the offensive caricature shit. So you're not you're not defending playing a black role. You're pl- defending playing blackface, and that's totally different. Yes, it is. But anyway, I don't think honestly, the, and I was thinking about this the other day, um, talking to a friend. There's so many things, and this is just for me. There's so many things in my life I don't find to be off limits. I just think context, nuance, pushback, all that Tone. stuff, all that stuff counts. All of that stuff is part of this process. Like, um, uh, like uh, the word, for example, the word crazy, right? Uh, somebody the other day, somebody was talking about, you know, not wanting to use that word, which I I won't use it around them because I'm accommodating I, you know I'm, I'm gonna try to be a nice person it doesn't necessarily mean we have to agree on the shit t- you know words lockstep in my own spaces i probably won't won't um shy away from using that word but to me it's context right so people don't like crazy because it becomes dismissive of people's um mental state and it can be a triggering word for certain people that have had that word thrown at them to gaslight them or to uh dismiss their mental health and stuff and that totally makes sense and i try not to use it that way even though i'm sure being raised in a society that has used it that way i'm pretty sure i'll, I'll mess up every once in a while even mm-hmm. when i'm not attentive to right but the thing for me is like the word crazy if you say that party was crazy last night i don't find that in any way to be offensive and if i did offend somebody by saying that i just have to live with the fact they were offended right and i'm gonna just have to be okay with that because to me that is a totally different use. And the thing I was saying that bothers me about it, and it's not just crazy, it's a lot of different words. Mm-hmm. People, I think, are desirous of nigger. They want to have a nigger. Like a word you just are not supposed to say under any context unless you are a Black person talking about something. You're just not supposed to use that word. And I think there are other groups who see and model their version of empowerment off of black empowerment and black causes and nigger is the most covetous one it's the one it's the it's one of them ones it's the it's the you can't ever say that one or you're a bad person if you're not black you know and even with nigger with the hard r in context i can find ways that it don't bother me same you know like i've been in like i remember that story we read about i think it was I forget the writer, but it was this black storied writer. He'd been in TV and and like he's an older black man. And he was in a writer's room with like younger people and stuff like that. And he's retelling a story of racism that he had to deal with. And he said the N-word because it's what the officer said to him in the story, you know, the story he's telling. 
and they reprimanded him and kicked him out of the room for saying the N word it, to relate that the racism that happened to him. Another example that just recently happened, um, the, we played this clip on the show, but Bob Huggins, the coach, went and said that very homophobic Catholic F words rant on, on or, or joke on a local radio show. He was uh, given a new contract. He was docked a million dollars pay and you'll be suspended like a game or something, but really not that big a deal for him. I mean, I'm sure a million dollars is a big deal, but you know what I mean? Like he, he didn't lose his job. He's going to be back. They don't care. Well, there's a, a host of a TV sh- of a podcast called Locked On, whatever. Like, what yeah, is- that's a whole series. Yeah, a lot of people do them locked on. So it might be like Locked On West Virginia. It's a sports podcast, and they talk about local sports. So he played the clips on his show, white dude, played them on his show unedited to then go on and decry those clips and say that is unacceptable. This right. man should be fired. This, 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 because this, you want to give context. They fired him. How they fire him? He got fired for for playing the clip unedited, and to me, so this is the kind of thing for me. This is my personal line. I find that shit to be so fucking stupid and silly. Right. You know, like I like a lot of times we're searching for something to be the n word of something, and we're doing zero tolerance, and we're losing the fucking plot. You know, there's to me there's a difference between how you use the word. If someone were telling me um you know uh something uh, uh about um and they said if they said yeah you know that party was crazy or i ordered some crazy bread if i need them to change the name of the bread i feel like is it's not really changed it's not actually solving any of the shit that i claim that it's going to be solving um and i think that's what happened with a lot of this um a lot of the way we approach things um in general with uh you know, our, 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 the way we're trying to police and change language. So, um. yeah. And for uh, somebody brought it up, and I do agree for some people, because of social media and the society we live in, we have words for things, which is a good thing. But also, some people are very performative when it comes to this shit. A lot of times they're jumping in and they're defending people that sometimes may not even ask. I've seen this. Sometimes the people aren't even offended in the group. They didn't ask you to defend them. You're just running out there on your own accord right. because it's a purity performance test to see I am pure. I'm a good girl. I'm a good yeah. boy. I'm a good person. Love me. Accept me. And, and I am perfect. I am not flawed. You know, type And of that's thing. a good impulse. I hope more people have it. I think the world will be better if we erred on the side of that stuff, which is why I don't fight and fuss about this stuff. I think it's good. I'm like, Okay, cool. I won't say that around you. But if you want to have an actual discussion about it, it's like, well, no, I don't necessarily agree. I think we shouldn't use it in this context. Like, you right. shouldn't be walking around saying Kanye West is crazy uh, to dismiss him. We like, I think, because it could bother your friends around you. I have friends that have like bipolar disorder. They don't, you know, like referring to that, they may, it may bother them or not, you know. Um, that's also individual because it don't bother everybody. But my right. point, my point being, like, I get the discussion, but we're not really having the discussion. We're shutting it down. Totally fine. The point coming back to all this, same thing with this role reversal of race switching and shit. It's a context to it. If a if a white person gets a role that could have went to a black person, or the character was black in a book, but it wasn't really germane to the story. I'm not really going to be that upset by that. Now, you know, there are going to be people who are upset and it's going to, you know, a lot of questions of why and all this stuff. I wouldn't necessarily be bothered by just that alone. So that's why I'm saying it's a context thing. People aren't mad because sometimes a white person plays a role that would have went to a, a black person or was a black character or something like that. What people are mad about is shit like blackface Shit like characters that were written for black people where race is a particular importance to that character yes, and you just throw a white person in it. Right. So that like it's a context thing. That's why I was going with all that stuff is in with out in a certain context, sure, people would be like, Yeah, I get it. This this role went to a white person and Robert Downey Jr., it was crucial to that role that he get that and it, and he played it well and we enjoy that version of blackface called it. But then people with this blanket blackface is always offensive it's like well not really because that one wasn't but many other cases it is so i don't i'm not with the zero tolerance hard and fast rule 
never, ever, ever shit. I'm not with that because it really shuts down critical thinking. It yes. really shuts down conversation. It really shuts down thought. It, so to me, that zero tolerance ends up with somebody losing their job for calling out Bob Huggins, who then goes on to get him an extension, and he the motherfucker that said the shit. Right. So anyway, that's a big tangent, uh, but that's what I was thinking. Episode, uh, what was it? Let me make sure I'm on the right one. Uh, we just did Gray the Road. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So the next one is 2710, Folk Asian. And this is where we had my man J.L. Covan on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I always love when he comes through. Me too. We have uh, RBW says, long time listener, first time commenter. Love the show. I just subscribed via the Corona special because y'all have gotten my non-podcast listening husband hooked on your spoiled movie reviews. Yes. Oh. So much so we're going to see Guardians for the second time this weekend. I'm pretty sure we'll go for a third. Keep doing what you're doing. Glad to finally be a subscriber. Thank you, Yay. RBW. EVE says it's a shame about Burger King closing 400 shows stores. You know what what's not closing? Arby's. As a it's matter so late. As a matter of fact, they're building one of a, a few miles away from me now. So now I don't have to drive as far to enjoy the delicious beef and cheddar sandwiches and Jamocha shakes. They have the meats. And when I go, there's always a line. You're just a hater, Rod, who can't appreciate the bounty of meaty goodness. Well, you know. <laughs> You know, uh, <laughs> right, let's let Karen get out of the system, guys. It's always funny to be. You know, I'm glad you brought it up because uh, I don't, I, I mean, it's no way you could have known this because, you know, you don't listen to what I be saying. Clearly, you just listen to the show but don't absorb it. But people have been tagging me in this article all day and all yesterday. Employee found dead in the freezer at Louisiana Arby's. Oh, no. Maybe that's the meats that they ain't been serving your ass. I hope all that Wagyu beef for $6 is fucking soiling green. I hope it's people. I hope you've been eating fucking people. I hope you're very happy about that shit. <laughs> Drug cartel supporting ass nigga. <laughs> Officials in southern Louisiana are investigating that the woman was found in the freezer at an Arby's restaurant. The body of a woman, an employee at the restaurant in New Iberia, was found shortly after 6 p.m. You probably live in Iberia. It's probably right up the street from you. It's probably the new location. <laughs> You been eating them motherfucking dead people burgers and shit. I bet it was flies and maggots and shit on there. Uh, the matter remains under investigation. Yeah, they got to talk to Gus Fring. No other details were to release. The identity one was not released. Um, so yeah, you in you enjoy that more obvious for you, Eve. I'm glad you get to enjoy that because I don't eat places where dead people are out of food. That's just not my thing. But you know what I'm saying. Everybody got to like something. So I'm glad that you are the person that's upholding that bullshit. Um, the poll. Do you get sad or happy when celebs get divorced? Yes, I get happy. Yes, I get sad. I don't really feel anything. Zero percent get happy. It's interesting because we were recently uh, work, doing some stuff with Keith and the girl mm-hmm. for last week on Keith and the girl. And Keith, and I think maybe even him, did, but definitely Keith for sure. And some of their audience, they get happy when they hear celebs getting divorced. And so I was like, oh, I wonder how much of our audience feels the same way. And apparently zero of you niggas do. Good grief. Um, and that goes to Spotify, too. Zero people get happy when they see a celeb get divorced. 16% get sad and 84% don't feel anything. Damn. Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, y'all are healthy. And I love to see it. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they was like, I'm not. They like, they, they ain't. I ain't gonna give up no alimony. Yeah, I don't. I, I like. It's not even that I don't care, but I should. Nah, that's about right. I don't really care. I just don't be feeling. But I think it's just the relationship I grew up with to celebrity in my house. I just right. have never felt like I know celebrities. I've, I've, I've like I, I can like I have a warm feeling about a celebrity the way I have a warm feeling about a movie or a sports team or something. Like it, it's not that serious for me i can take it or leave it um the i think i think there's like when bad stuff happens to celebrities it just reminds me that bad stuff happens to everybody in real life i agree and i guess i don't necessarily find that comforting because i already know that i just i never felt they were exception to it because they had money or were famous right but i think maybe a lot of people feel like 
oh, they're treated as the exception, and that this is a, a this is this is proof that everybody has failure in their life, and maybe that feels comforting, but yeah, I don't need it. That that's not what feels comforting to me, you know. Anyway, um, the next up. Oh wait, I think that was comments on the episode. Yeah. So, but did you feed them freedom? Was the comment. I did you. Uh, Ignacio says, "God damn, fast twitch ties." God damn, JL. Three laughing emojis. Carrie says, "I feel like JL should feel a way about Rod saving the white woman reveal stories for his appearances." Uh, great show, and I can't wait for JL news special for the drop. Uh. Yeah, well, I don't save them for him. This one was saved for him because I, on Twitter, he had told me he went to school with her. So I was like, okay, I'll save this one. But no, nah, whenever the new white woman being revealed, uh, whenever the pop-up is out, I, I say it right away on the show. I love a good white woman being exposed, uh, pretending to be a person of color. Mm. Ah! Also, y'all ever notice it's not men? Mm-mm. It's always white women. So there's something someone need to write a book about this shit. Yeah. And they they be like infiltrating the the like activists and professorial spaces. It's a lot that need to be looked into. And it would um this is just I'm I'm opening up my third eye. Okay. All right. Well, hold on. Let me pull out the third eye music. Um here you go. All right. Open your third eye. Uh All right, player, do you? All right, because of uh, misogyny, mm-hmm. men entering any space, people are always suspect of them. Like, they're going to look on the average. They're going to investigate. They're going to be like, what the fuck you doing in here? They're going to check their credentials. They're going to do a more digging. I think when it comes to women, women can go up underneath the radar sometimes and a lot of times they're less likely to be challenged sometimes or people are less likely to investigate them because they're women um like i said i might completely be wrong but when you talk about women i was like oh yeah i i, I, yeah, I can see that i can it's see just because that, you're not a man it's just that for this logic that you're using to completely make sense we will be living in a world where a woman has more unquestioned authority than a man and i don't know that and and and, and <laughs> i and, feel and, like and, women's credentials and, and authority and stuff is challenged all the time and, that, and i'm saying in certain spaces not mm-hmm. everywhere not in society but if you realize these only happen in certain spaces so right. it only happens in like an academia it only happens in certain spaces so it's something about these spaces where a check and balance is out of whack somewhere I don't know. Where, where somebody don't do an invest, because why is it always women? Because my thing is, why don't everybody do this? Why is it know, always these women that get caught? I personally think it has a lot to do with them being women and people not checking. I hear you, and I hate to challenge a woman, but it kind of is proving my point that I am. Um, it's that if you look in act like academia specifically has a reputation of being a space like that, but I don't think it is. Like you look at the actual board and stuff, it's white men in a lot of cases that run shit and so i i don't know i'm not saying you're wrong i just we are examining you push forth the third eye theory you knew it was out here <laughs> now you're getting defensive because i'm talking no. about your third eye theory but i'm saying but okay, okay. in this and, and world not, uh, like maybe in activism a little bit right like maybe in activism in certain spaces it's it became black woman centered black femme centered and people wouldn't question that but but I don't know. Okay, and, and and I guess the another reason. Okay, I'm gonna continue continue down my rabbit hole. These are always white women, and so we're talking about a space where white women in our society always get the benefit of a down of a lot of bullshit. Okay, in general, but now they're in the area where they have fooled people because the, the, their quote-unquote proximity to whiteness is almost like they get the best of both worlds. They have a proximity to whiteness, so they know how the white white people think. And then they have this thing where I don't want to say their proximity to blackness, but they have infiltrated these groups and black people are very accepting. And so it's one of those things where we're going to go, okay, that's the cool. thing though. Like, like, cause someone tried to say like, well, men will let the women pass cause they want to fuck them. 
first of all, men want to fuck all the women anyway. That don't even make like <laughs> yes, that's not do. no. Oh, 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 she she pretending to be black now. I extra want to fuck her. Like that don't even make sense. Like no, they would have let uh, a woman, any woman, infiltrate if that's the case. They right? want to fuck all of them. It's something like I think it's something specific to white womanness mm-hmm. that makes them want to attempt it. And then this is my this is my conspiracy theory. I think because they are around white people socially, they know how to talk to them. Yes, and they know how to pitch because the people who mm-hmm. run this shit at the top of these organizations are typically white people. The people yes. that like even yeah. when even when we're talking about like Rachel Dolezal out with the NAACP, the people you go talk to for funding typically white people. You know, so like white women knowing the language of how to finesse white people in power at a university to me seems more plausible as an explanation. And white women have the caucasity to be like, I can do it is also more plausible of an explanation to me. But, you know, I could be wrong. I think the unquestionableness is not true. I think people do question. That's why we keep catching them. And there's always some motherfuckers, sometimes a lot of white people, by the way. They'd be like, oh, I knew. Like, oh, we've been trying to tell people. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's something, it's like, it's like the people at the top don't care and then everyone falls in line. Yeah, and 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 basically you're saying some of the things I said because I was like their proximity to whiteness, which is basically you just explained it another way. But yeah, their proximity to whiteness matters. Well, I mansplained it another way, Karen. I didn't explain what? it. Uh <laughs> explained it as a man. Uh no, it's <laughs> no, it's I'm I'm not, it's just. Your thing was like they don't get questioned because um because women don't get questioned in these areas and well, I, that's not what that's, I meant. That's what bad. you said. I mean, that's what I said, so but I that's don't not think, what I mean. Okay, yeah, I won't I don't we not saying the same thing is my point. Like I'm not saying like because I that feels a little like the conservative argument against Black Lives Matter and against activism and against black people getting jobs and stuff where they'd be like well it's because it's so easy for black people i mean that's why i can't as a white comedian i didn't get the late night spot because they're only going to black people it's like that's not the world the world as we know it actually question like it's the world as we know it comes down harder on you as a black woman so someone pretending to be a black woman should be uh should should be harder for them to get what they want to accomplish so i i like i said i go to it must be something in the way that they perform this type of blackness because they're coming from a white point of view because their life is a white woman so they're coming from what they think blackness is what the good and the bad of it and then they perform that and they get to the bag because the people that hold the bag are the whites. That's my guess. Yes. And on top of that, they, they know how to talk. They know how to not sound intimidating. They know how to not turn white people off, you know, type of shit. Like, it, you know, it's a lot of things. They are they make white people feel comfortable. So white people are less likely to be suspect. And on top of that, white people actually don't care. And so that's why a lot of times the pushback, uh, but just, unless you're a white person that's like an ally, most white people are like, well, that's the nigga issue. Like, 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 let them figure that shit out. Okay, we got tricked. And because if this was something that they wanted to correct, they could correct this bullshit, but they're opting not to correct it for a reason. Opting not to correct it? What do you mean? Opting not to correct these white people infiltrating these black spaces. Like, if, if this was particularly academic, if this was something well, I, I that mean, they want to check and correct, they would. I don't know about that. I think when they get busted, they are... That's when it's getting corrected. We find out during the correction. Well, like we ain't find out. Like we're not finding out these stories, and then people be like, "Yeah," and then she kept the job. Everybody was cool with it, and it was no big deal. Like, no. When you find out, when they find out you infiltrated that space, whether it's to feeling that they are beholden to the black people who are upset or the women who are upset or whatever, they get them out of there. So I don't feel like it's a. Uh, yeah, it, it, it yeah, it, like it's they're fooling these people. I do believe that it's working. I don't think it's like a we. It's like once it is revealed and you have some proof for the record, like you can't just feel the vibes and be like, I think she's a white woman. But once people come up with the facts, like these motherfuckers yeah. be out of there. Yeah, and and I, and I do understand it, and I, and I guess what I mean, correct it. I, I I guess I've come from perspective of 
they, and I'm trying to be funny, they shouldn't have to be, you know, president of the NAACP. They shouldn't have to be, you know, vice chair of the equity board before we'd be like, ah, you know, everybody come out. But it's like, when it first start, you know, they apply, they have a background, of, like nobody is going back. Everybody's like, well, you know, and I, and I do understand that sometimes you just don't know. Don't get me wrong. Not sometimes, all the time. Yeah, you, they you don't, don't know. know. Like yeah. you, you keep talking like everybody knew. And then like, we just let her be in double. Nobody knew, especially the black people. Like, is the people that be knowing a lot. So this might be another caveat, though. Sometimes the people that be knowing are white. That's how they know these people. It's like I know Rachel Dole is out. She's a white woman, and a lot of times in those type of spaces, that's the place where we tell white people shut the fuck up, and we're empowered to do so. So we can end because a lot of times black women in those spaces get unfair criticism and hate and constantly question that maybe people even get defensive and be like Rachel Dolez leave her alone she you just mad because she's raising money for the NAACP so maybe that's part of it too you know like I could see that happening but I think once the murmur of she ain't black starts and it starts trickling up right they get rid of these people like we don't have a case example of where it's like and then everybody was like nah you can still be a professor you get fired. You have no power. The question is, what is it about their particular performance of blackness that is so fucking uh, intoxicating? Ex- ex- I was going to say, <laughs> I guess this term is, uh, it's like an accelerant. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, uh, like their, like the, 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 their, their shit is like an arson. You know what I'm saying? Like it goes on fire right away. It's, it's straight to the top. It's, we got to put this black woman, we got to get her a book. And it's like, what is it about the way, it got to be the way they perform the blackness. Because we know it's inauthentic, especially in hindsight. Like, shit, half of us, as soon as we see the first picture, we be like, nah, not that. they didn't know that wasn't a black woman. Like, I wonder, I wonder if it's just the performance of it. Anyway, I, we won't figure out today here, mm-hmm. but I definitely don't think it's because being a black woman is easier. And oh, and gets less challenges in certain spaces. I think there's no space in America where a black woman can, dude, can, and, go, and, and, can go and un, can go unchallenged. And, and that's not what I meant at all. I know yeah. I may have said it like that, but I was kind of talking in general. And yeah. what I think I'm talking about, like the white woman, the white. Well, it was a third woman. eye. It was your third eye talking. It's it's fine. It's you were throwing out a. Yeah, when your third eye, you you know, you know, uh, all the stuff that goes along with the well thought out argument, as you can see, don't come out when you throw your third eye out there. You're just like, I see it. Yeah, I mean, listen, I you know, for the purposes of the show and for just conversations in general, and anytime one of us throws out a conspiracy or whatever, it's it's gonna be it's, it should ah! it's I'm not just gonna sit here and be like, Well, there you go, guys. Like, I'm gonna think about it. I you know, I think what you said requires serious thought and <laughs> That's what our show does, and if you put something out there, I'm gonna be like think about it critically because sometimes that's how I learn, and that's how I'm like, oh yeah, that I hadn't thought of it that way. And then sometimes it's like, oh no, nah, that's why that doesn't work. This is low key kind of what happens with the writers' rooms and all this other shit I'm doing. Is you put something out there, and then you kind of have to like prove it. You got to show it. You got to yeah. cite your sources. You got to you got to make sure it jives with the other things you believe because if not, it's like I said, it's a slippery slope to, mm-hmm. you know, white people was right. Being being a black woman <laughs> is the, the easiest setting in America. It's I like, did not mean that at all. Yeah. No. Uh, but they but you're right, those white women would see it that way for sure. Um, all right, let's get to the next episode. Uh that was folk Caucasian. Um, uh, Falcasian. Um the last y'all, ep- y'all see what happened when we had JL on the show. He calls us to have these conversations. Um yeah, well, Gail was probably sitting somewhere like it is easier for women. Ah! Everything. That's why they're not funny in the first place. Yeah, he probably does. <laughs> think so. Uh, let's. I wish. Uh, I was about to say something extremely funny that I'll text Jl later. Um, <laughs> all right, episode twenty-seven, eleven, chicken top five. Uh, Kevy Kev says, "Where can I see pictures of the Illusion Museum?" Um. Well, it was on my Instagram. I put a reel up, but you can also go to our the Blackout Tips Instagram. Um, it's I put a reel up uh, there too. Um, and um, I don't think we put it on Facebook. I don't think I don't think I put it on Facebook, but I can go do that. Um, but yeah, if you go to Instagram and put in TBGWT because we lost access to our first 
Instagram. Yeah. Uh, but if you put, uh, I'm sorry, no, no, no. If you put the black guy who tips, yeah, that's right. Uh, and then you, uh, and then you look at our reels. It's it's on there. It's like the second post. Now I put it on there. I only got 12 likes, so I guess niggas wasn't feeling it. But and no comments, of course. But uh, yeah, check it out. It's fun. And uh, if you got one in your city, you should do it. Uh, EV says, I love a good chicken wing and legs, but then again, I'll take chicken any way I can get it. Uh, Tucker Carlson being platformed on Twitter will continue to go viral because of all the so-called progressives retweeting him to either dunk on him or to get engagement themselves. No one seems to realize that these people continue to say these outrageous things because they keep getting the attention they desire. Yes. Or maybe they do realize it, but they need the clout. Uh, the need for clout is too addictive. It is. It is. Uh, that's uh, that's our country's obsession with uh, obsession with Trump and a lot of these other things. It's like, oh, this is so basic and this is so simple. I can dunk on you to make myself feel better. And that causes shit to go viral. That causes people posting it to their people and these people posting it to their people. That causes it, it to go across and everybody's watching and everybody's looking. But the thing at the at the foundation of it is attention. So if you don't give people attention, they'll fade away because they don't have a choice because the eyes are no longer on them. And then they'll try to do something else to quote unquote, get your attention. It's one of those things where it's like a circle. People keep falling for the same thing every time. They're not doing anything new. They're not, you're not even requiring them to be more challenging at the shit they do. Right. It's just, Hey, look at here, look at here, look at here, look at here, look at here. And everybody consistently look, you know, because every, and what's so funny. And I feel like this and, and uh, people can agree or disagree with me. But Trump going on CNN, that was a trick bag. Everybody watched. Everybody was angry. Everybody was outraged, along with the people that was like, go Trump, go. Uh, let's go Brandon. So everybody was watching. They probably broke records that they probably hadn't broke in years because of this. That well, was I the don't, point. Well, honestly, I don't even think that many people watched. Like, that's what's crazy about it. Like, I think they said 3.3 million people watched or something. That's not that many people. Um, they may have done it for that, but that's not what happened. I think also, um, um, part of it is the people that get the most upset are the ones more prone to share it, as you said, and they want to be seen disliking it. And that's a big part of it for them is being seen disliking it. Um, and it is content, you know, people swearing off CNN that probably in a month will be watching some on CNN. Because if you're the kind of person that watches CNN on the regular, you're not going to quit over this more than likely. Mm -mm. Uh, where are you going to go? MSNBC is becoming more and more centrist. And as CNN is already centrist, mm -hmm. um, the people taking over want the, the networks to be more centrist. They want some of those right wing viewers, even though I don't think they're ever going to get them. Nope. Um, and it's kind of reminds me of the Budweiser thing. You're trying to please too many masters and you're pleasing nobody, you know? Um but I and I agree. I I I agree with you on a lot of that virtue signal and stuff. It's that's what's giving the content. That's what's giving it the boost on Twitter. I think also though it's the obsession that the media has with Twitter because like mm -hmm. I saw Anderson Cooper basically did like a, a kind of a bit of a condescending like we're we're trying to get you out of your information silo by having Trump on. Meanwhile, you know, from what I've heard, I haven't watched it. It's been a lot of like the questions weren't good. Um, and then they basically manipulated the environment. So supposedly behind the scenes during commercials and stuff, they were having to tell the audience not to boo Trump and shit like that because the people were like, this is trash. And then so so you manufactured a, 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 a something that looks civ like civil and stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of leaks coming out because the people that work there don't agree with that shit. Right. They didn't take that job to do Trump's PR. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, they're leaking shit anonymously to the media. And if it's to be believed, they're like, yeah, this, the new CEO was like, you know, talking to Trump and Trump's like, I'm going to get you these ratings. And he was like, ah, 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 you know, like that's what he cares about. But, uh, yeah, a lot of it is outrage, um, um, outrage, uh, I guess public relations or outrage not public relations but it's like using it's like outrage advertising they're using your anger to advertise these things are happening because they rather have you be mad than not talking about 
CNN or whatever, mm-hmm. not talking about Tucker Carlson. And I think a big part of this is going to be interesting is the media personality's obsession with Twitter because Twitter is always talking to them, mm-hmm. giving them that attention that they're courting and it's directly in their mentions and shit. The way that that has corrupted their point of view and the reason that so much of our analysis on news is just not based in reality and i mean this liberal analysis as well Mm -hmm. the reason that they think like the super liberal shit is the only way to go and everybody agrees is because they don't actually be looking at number twitter like that like they're not actually talking to people at this point they're just looking at what's trending on social media and being like that's the topic that's what people care about Anytime someone reports on a Twitter trend like that, that's like, to me, the laziest form of we didn't do no work. You know, it's like, oh, Elon Musk was trending on Twitter today. It's like, okay, but it's bigger than just whether or not he was trending on Twitter. Twitter's a very small group of people. Yes, it is. And it's also one of those things that if they succeed at that or not, that's not the point. It's just for the fact that once we put this shit out here, it's, it, we're doing it for a show. And you come, you don't come, but somebody else is going to come with the same show. Yeah. All, they, all they're going to do is change the colors, but the location is the same to get your attention. And it's one of those things where, like you said, it's bad when this affects journalism. Because a lot of people talk about journalism. For some journalists, I could see some journalists going, no, do your fucking job and actually investigate. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Not this bullshit where you're allowing something else to output and give you the information. Yeah, I think this is why you get takes like, you know, Biden is going to lose. He's not popular. No one likes him. And then real life, when people have to leave the house to vote, it's the direct opposite. He's the most popular candidate of all time. Maybe that's in reaction to Trump. That's fine. Even if it's in reaction to Trump, y'all missed it. Y'all were wrong. And how many times do you have to be wrong before it's like maybe Twitter is not an indication of shit? But yeah, Tucker Carlson going to Twitter makes sense. That's always been a a, a match made in hell. Um, all right, like I said, Chicken Top Five is the last episode. Is there okay? More comments. Abby says, "I'm glad Trump lost the civil trial, alone for the fact that uh, finally there are some consequences to his actions." I agree. Um, I don't know what this will mean in the long run, but for now, I'm glad that he wasn't able to make this problem just disappear. Do I think he did it? 100%. Um, and comments on uh, YouTube. Let's check those out real quick. I uh, got three. Chocolate Lady Cap says, I live in NYC and never been to the Empire State Building, nor have I been to Coney Island outside of work. Uh, Alicia says the Illusion Museum opens in Atlanta this month. I got me and my kids tickets. I think they will like it. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Y'all gonna have fun. It was a lot of it. Was a blast. Sayida says this one was hilarious. Puns and all. Thank you. Hashtag Team Thighs. Thank you, Sayida. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, the poll for this episode was: Do you think the baby learned his lesson? Yes or no? Mm-hmm. And it says no. Eighty percent of the audience says no, which means twenty percent says yes. And then on Spotify, 9% yes, 91% no. I think I'm in the no camp. You know, I feel like... It could turn into a yeah, but time will tell. I think I, you know, I phrased this question in a, like, kind of, like, facetious way. Because I made you pick yes or no. When I think most of us probably think it's somewhere between, like, he learned to not say that shit out loud. Or he learned the consequences Mm -hmm. of doubling down. But we don't think he, like did no work into learning to accept gay people and shit. It seemed like most of his comments were still centered around how he felt, which, you know, that is valid. That is how people, you know, that's how most people view everything is through their lens. Right. But it seemed mostly about like, look what happened to me. I can't believe what the, what the gay people did to me, you know, and I learned not to say it no more. You know, that's how it felt. All right. Last thing, uh, not last thing, but the Q&A, um, we need to talk about that. And um, and then we'll see what the voicemail is looking like. Uh, to keep Tory Lanez was the Q and A. Uh, what is beeping? I don't know. My phone is silent. Do and you have sh- your tablet in here? My shit is down. Karen has an iPad. My mom bought her, and uh, I think she just doesn't know how to turn it on silent. Do you need me to turn it on silent for you? How you turn it? On? Um, it's kind of like the phone. I think there's like a little switch on the side. You can flip down and make it be silent. Okay. All right. Uh, you good? Or you found it? I think I am. Hold on. All right. 
Uh, Chaco Bean says, "My brother, don't eat all off the don't eat all off the bone." Oh, talking about chicken wings. My mom asked him very plainly, "What's wrong with you?" She's from the school of eating the marrow out the bone, so she's not sure where he he got it from. Carrie says the baby didn't learn the lesson he was supposed to, but he did learn a lesson, which was how to navigate the outrage machine. He's still ignorant, just not in public. Also, hashtag defund the Tories defense team. I agree. And, and yeah, Carrie, that's I didn't make that an option one. I didn't have time to type out them words, but I think that's the real answer. Ah! The real answer is like he learned like not to fuck around. Uh, he just still don't know why he found out. He still don't mm-hmm. know. Ty Flojan says, deport him. Ignacio says, fuck this dude, man. Uh, Lee says, y'all brought back some traumatic memories. I used to get in trouble because I always left meat on the chicken wing. Who want to eat them nasty black strings? Ew. Uh, everybody but you, Lee? I mean, nigga, you the weirdo. I was about to say, yeah, and, and that's the case. Just get chicken tenders and chicken strips. People act like that's not an option. Well, I mean, no you're bones. probably talking about your parents making them at that point. Uh, right, right. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, no, we're not getting chicken strips. What you, what you gonna get is a chick with the bones in it. I get, okay. That's a, now that's understandable. Baby. Yeah, when you say brought back traumatic, traumatic memories, I'm assuming you, from a time you didn't have a choice. Right. Uh, Kenneth W says, wait, is Elon Musk the African prince that sent us emails back in the day? <laughs> he might be. Uh, you know, he is from Africa. Raphael yes, says, uh, Canada needs to keep their own, but after he is done serving his time for his crime, can't even file him under the there's nothing else to do style. Go to the jail court ah! toys and head up north afterwards. Take the oath. Uh, yeah. Send him up to the wall. Uh, all right. Let's see if we have any uh, nope. No voicemails today. But uh, y'all know how we do over here. I still need to play like uh, some music so I know where to put the commercials later. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let me pull out some of this music and uh, Let's go with this. got two emails um the first one is from theron who says for those crazy white parents and it's a screenshot um let me see if i can share my screen with y'all so we can look at it together in my email um and it says on instagram reminders from your child i'm a kid it's just a game my coach is a volunteer umpires are human no college scholarships will be handed out today. Thank you. Right. And it says, thanks, good news. As a newly minted Little League dad, I think, I wish they had this for all the ballparks. Yep. They do. I really do. Calm the fuck down, parents. I really, like. There's no college recruits out here watching your seven-year-old play t-ball. Yeah. It was, it's crazy because I was raised, crazy. It's it's weird, too, because I was raised in that um, environment as well um as a black person uh it was that feeling of like only one way out the hood selling drugs or get a good jump shot or whatever and uh it's so not true Mm -mm. and the pressure that people treat sports with within our community was it was you could feel that pressure on the kids. Yes, like, you could. damn, you're not even really, the kids not even having fun. It's like every kid need to be figuring out if this going to be what makes them go to college. They're going to be LeBron James. Like the, the stuff of like, man, we're just playing this for social interaction, to learn how to make friends, yeah, to learn how to deal with fun. rules, to learn how to practice kids and get be better. Nailed at, boy. To learn the difference between winning and losing. All that stuff is what, you know, and, and like when you see that shit, at least for me, when I saw that, uh, working at the uh, this this very uh, up uh, well to do YMCA when I was working there and I saw the kids just having fun. And my first reaction was like, "What the fuck is this shit? Like, these kids are terrible at basketball. Why are they even out here? They're not even gonna be good." And then I think you know I saw how the parents treated them, how they were paying so much attention, 
how you know they were like cheering them on and very encouraging yeah how they were like and then i watched i watched a couple weeks later because you know the kids was sorry I watched a couple of weeks later, and the kids from the Black YMCA had a game against the kids at the, the this nice up to do white YMCA and shit, right? Man, them black kids whooped their motherfucking ass. I'm talking about like 40 point at halftime lead type of shit. Like the black kids were so much better. And but I was thinking, like, looking at the black kids, it wasn't the same level of like no pressure. Like right. it wasn't the level of like, man, we just having fun. This is about community. This is about uh, like this is like like it felt like there was more pressure on the black kids to like be great at basketball or else. And of course, we all know a lot of these white kids from these well-to-do homes are gonna go and be whatever the fuck society pushes them towards, and they're gonna be just fine. But they'll have like a a confidence that's not relying on being great at it at something yeah and also uh not to get too deep for it's uh, too late let's get too deep okay and for a lot of the black children a lot of children is doing it just for fun they get pushed out of a lot of these leagues they're like oh you whack you sorry you ain't no good and they're like i just want to have fun and hang with y'all and a lot of times they're like look if you ain't the top tier the best of the best just get the whole entire fuck out of here and so I could see for some children, it just turning them off of like sports and following sports and just that whole genre of mm-hmm. just the enjoying it out of pure enjoyment. There are a lot of people that may have even liked sports as an adult, but were completely turned off as a kid because of the social pressure to just be the fucking best of the best of the best of the best of the best. It's like, now I might not have a hand eye coordination, but I just want to be out here. I just want to sit on the bench. I just want to, you know, just enjoy it. But I could see a lot of people literally getting pushed out where and a lot of these other leads they're like oh i'm here to have because layla played ball and for later she was like oh i'm here to have a good time i don't care about no defense i won't see them no more like i'm 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 cool with this like it it, it wasn't a pressure for you to be the best block shocker the best three-pointer for you to have the, the most defense you know a lot of them would go home and they'll be just fine uh, you know you know uh they you know if their parents go okay we'll invest money for you to go to get all this training and stuff but even then if that child was to change their mind it wouldn't be that pressure of not because for a lot of black people you know it's it's a huge investment once you get to a certain level for the, the parents are like oh i want to go do dance okay let's go do dance okay let's go do this but i'm probably that i didn't invest my money and all this goddamn back you gonna do this bullshit till you you know till you graduate or whatever it may be and a lot of you know kids i can see a lot of kids graduating just fucking hating it because they were like well i want to do something else this is not enjoyable anymore i'm doing it because you're obligating me to do it versus just something out of the pure enjoyment of the child which are two different things yeah that's just there's pressure there's just pressure on black people in general. And I think when you're dealing with that pressure, it comes out and it's pushed on our kids and mm-hmm. stuff like that. This isn't a black culture is it fears Mm-mm. conversation or anything. This is just a like, oh man, I can see the how it happens and the difference. And um, I don't know, it just I it always struck out stuck out to me in that way where it's like, man, that like it's not ideal it's not tenable that we're experiencing shit this way like it's not it's not cool that black kids have to deal deal with shit like this but also this is why in a lot of cases um it's it's a privileged situation because because like that's the other thing it's not just black and white because even the black kids that go to the rich ass ymca i was at even they approached it like yeah it's just networking and fun because like they didn't have to worry they weren't there was no like, and how do I get out the hood part of this? <laughs> like it's everything was pressure. just, it's a good term, you know. <laughs> like I think that's a big difference. I, I forget how we even got on this, but uh, yeah. Oh, because I told you I want to, I want to quote unquote take it deep, and uh, yeah, it's one of those things where you know, just on the outside looking in, you know, like you say, it it is a difference between I gotta make it out. How how you know I'm. Know, may end up being a breadwinner for my family versus my family I already have it. Mm-hmm. I'm just chilling. If I choose to go do something else, I can. And a lot of this because of privilege is why a lot of you know parents have a tendency to steer their children into sports. The shit where it comes to the arts, the shit where can't nobody give a steady paycheck. 
mm-hmm. you know, it, if, if you are in a place where you don't have the privilege to, of the luxury to be thinking, you know, I may one day make it, you know, a lot of parents, they're not trying to hear that. They're like, nigga, here's a basketball, nigga, here's a football, you know, what do you, what do you mean? No, stop that fucking drawing, you know, stop, stop, mm-hmm. stop that, you know, this other other shit because that shit ain't gonna get you nowhere you know i and, and the thing is it, it could be tough because at the end of the day a pa- most parents most loving caring parents are quote unquote doing it out of a place of love because they're like i want you i don't want you to have to suffer like me i don't want you to have to go through this but a lot of it is because of the way the society is set up people have a tendency to think this is the way it is it's the way it's going to always be and there's nothing in a lot of these people's world that has showed them otherwise or has showed them that it was changed and there's nothing around them that has given them hope <laughs> that, that there will be other ways out yeah i agree um and it's tough you mm-hmm. know what i mean because like um life hasn't really shown us that that's not true agree you know <laughs> right so i you know i don't blame them but i i i, I understand yeah like we, we we a lot of times we are worried about shit because it's like everything right on the future look niggas like you can't have no fun you can't uh anyway glad the email What's, oh, that's how we got into it. The rules for the kids yeah. and the parents. Yeah, chill out, parents. Um, also, I feel like a lot of that parental rage is just coming from something else. I don't know what oh, it is, yeah. but it's some some sadness in your life that is not being translated to, and you're putting it on your kid because whether you're happy with where you ended up in life or how sports went for you, or mm-hmm. you feel like the kid got to get you out the hood, or you feel like you need to get the ultimate a lot of respect from a fucking volunteer referee or coach wherever that's coming from is some something wrong with you it's something deeper yes west virginia chicken etc this from john who says good morning rod and karen we just got back from visiting rural west virginia for a funeral i'm talking real redneck hill country a couple hours from anything resembling a city once you get away from morgantown where west for you the you is it's a bit scary Lots of let's go Brandon and Trump signs and even a few Confederate flags, which is incredibly ironic since the state of West Virginia only exists because the Union won battles in that region and decided to split into another state. All of which to say, it doesn't surprise me in the least that that coach will say that homophobic shit on that terrible radio show. Just imagine what he says at practice. Right. And keep in mind, this motherfucker ain't um ain't lose his job. Mm-mm. Another thing we saw in West Virginia was a whole bunch of Arby's. Honestly, I never seen so many Arby's as we did in West Pennsylvania and West Virginia. It was weird. I can't imagine too many people choosing Arby's as a wedding location, but I can see them as a good place to present divorce papers to a future ex. Yeah, and to hide a dead body. Oh my goodness. If you want to hide a dead body, you know, <laughs> hop up in that Arby's, dog. That that might be a special, you know. Um Oh no. Yeah. Uh Rod, you mentioned our America's shameful response to common sense COVID protocols. I wanted to add that I've been reading a book called Mothers of Conservatism. That is another one about the rise of modern Republican Party and the huge role that white women in Southern California played um, as activists. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget. What was her name? Jennifer something. I forget the white lady's name. Jennifer McCarthy or something. Shout out to her. She, she, the, she really is the foremother of a lot of this fucking anti-vax bullshit yes in the 1950s and 60s there were a there was a big campaign to demonize the fields of psychiatry and psychology by white conservatives because they were paranoid that these new social sciences would be used to label racism and other forms of bigotry as mental health diseases and then round them up into a sane asylum which is so funny when you think about it because both sides actually agree on that (laughs) Like nothing pisses off liberal people by by then you suggesting that maybe somebody's racism is part of a mental health issue. Right. Um, and nothing pisses off these racist people than saying y'all crazy, you know. Um, I did it again. See, I told y'all this is fucking impossible. Anyway, um <laughs> nothing pisses them off more than that bullshit. Right. Um, and so it's this is the one side where they fucking agree, where it's like you know what? Uh, we're um, we're we're offended that you would think that us hating you is based on our mental health. We we we're doing this with a sober mind, and then our side is like, yeah, that's what we're saying. It's with a sober mind, y'all. Y'all just fucked up. There's plenty of people with mental health issues that ain't racist. Uh, yes, it is. Um, that being said, it's probably somewhere in the middle. There's probably some people's mental health issues that has affected that that made it 
play out in racial ways. I think if mental health can, if a mental health issue can make you kill your mom, and we can all agree that that's not, you just woke up and was like, I like killing my mom. We're like, something clearly went wrong. Then there's probably a bunch of middle gray areas we don't want to examine that aren't as black and white as we present them in society where it's like, maybe somebody's obsession with race and stuff is affected by their mental health for that one individual. But in general, no, we're not about to pass no blanket ass. Racism is a mental health issue thing in America. But anyway, and we definitely weren't going to lock up white people behind it. I don't, these white people are always afraid they go, white people are always afraid of what they do to other people is going to happen to them. Yes. Yes. Uh, I didn't even realize this history, but it helps explain why some of my white family members have always had this strange animosity towards mental health professionals. It was a real prominent part of propaganda to oppose communism and racial integration. So even before turning COVID into a Trump versus Biden, GOP versus Dem fight, this distrust of public health systems by white conservatives has a long track record in this country and likely had them ready to use that same bullshit against our COVID safety measures. Yeah, not to mention white people, even as they are on sucking on the government teeth. I'm talking about just just full Jim Carrey in 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 like that, all, that all one the, gift. All those services. Yeah, like even as they're sucking on the government to, they will be like, this is actually to help black people and that's and I want to cut this off. They shouldn't be allowed to get help. Like that's how they are sucking on the government teeth. And so I think part of it is also that. Like they it's a racial issue for them too. On the great chicken debate, I hate to live up to the stereotype, but like Alfonso Riviera, you can pass me those lovely white breasts my way. As long <laughs> as long as I get some greasy skin batter with each bite. Uh, well, that's another thing. The chicken breast skin don't last as long as skin on the thigh. Mm-hmm. If if you're into if you're into that, like the like a couple bites, you can the skin just fall off the the, the breast. And now you eating dry white chicken. I've never really minded the dryness, though without skin, they can get way too dry. Yeah, that's a big one. Uh, they do give great meat for sauteing with pasta and stuff, uh, stuff like that. Anyway, wings will always be my first choice, and that article is hilarious. Oh, well, time to get back to the great and rose. Cheers and stay safe, John. <laughs> thanks, thanks for chiming in, homie. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it. That's everybody's feedback. Thanks for listening. It was kind of a short one, and that we don't mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, uh throughout the week hopefully i we have a guest coming on but they've been kind of like uh, back and forth on email and I, i'm trying to make sure that they are getting my emails and know everything but right they they did confirm they want to come on um so hopefully we'll have a guest on wednesday okay. and uh like i said it'll probably be sporadic and then at some point we're going back to taking a week off every month because that's something we weren't really doing when i was in new york and uh you know niggas need rest Okay, uh, capitalism is bitch, but I don't need all the money. Uh, so we'll be we'll be <laughs> taking some time off. Uh, once 